number four, Charlie, Charlie, Oscar from Golf Bravo, two, three, Yankee, Oscar, Tango. Yeah. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, we'll take a look at SDR Connect Preview 2, which is a new SDR software package created by SDR Play. Now, if you're not aware, SDR Play design and manufacture the RSP range of software defined radios. And for some time now, their flagship SDR software is called SDR Uno. Now, SDR Uno is a fantastic piece of software with many features for professionals and newcomers. However, it only runs on Windows. Of course, there are a bunch of you that like to either use Mac OS or even Linux. So SDR Play has started developing a multi-platform SDR package that's designed to be used with their RSP SDR receivers. Now, I wouldn't say that SDR Connect is a finished and highly polished product at the time of making this video. It's more in the latter end of development phase, but it is still extremely usable. And with its simpler to use graphical interface in SDR Uno, it's a bit easier for those newcomers to get to grips with SDR software. Now, the first improvement which I can see over SDR Uno is that where you select which device to use, you can click the little refresh button if you forgot to plug in your SDR receiver before starting the application. Now from this little drop down, you can select an IQ file input, meaning you can play back a previously recorded IQ session. Now to the right of this is where we have a plus button, which allows you to add more virtual receivers, which is great if you are to say monitoring the digital modes of a particular band and routing its audio off to something like WSJTX, and then on the other receiver, you can listen to say SSB voice. Now this is possible due to each receiver being able to route its audio to different endpoints. Now the little cog icon next to that plus button allows you to change the sample rate and tenor port and make adjustments to the RF gain and IF AGC. Here you can also turn on things like bias T and enable the hardware filters which are built into the RSP devices. The next icon along, which looks like a little display monitor, allows you to change how the waterfall and scope looks and feels, changing the FFT size, reference level, base level, and gains can all be done from this little drop down. Now to zoom in and out on the spectrum, there are two magnifying glass buttons at the top. Now this will zoom in and out from where the VFO is selected on the waterfall. Now the main volume control out is also found to the right, of that zoom control. Now to the right of the waterfall and scope, we have a hideable panel, which is sectioned out into different features of the software. The control section at the top has a few options where you can change the mode of modulation, select a bandwidth preset filter, change the tuning steps when using the mouse wheel to change frequency, and also allow step snap on the spectrum. Now the bandwidth can manually be changed using your mouse on the AUX SP window on the top right if none of the preset filters suits your needs. Now most SSB voice transmissions are around 3 kHz or maybe just under, but some folks like wider audio for their ESSB experiments. The next section down caters for AGC and scroll settings. However, there are a couple of preset AGC profiles for you to choose from which will most likely cater for your needs. Now these little option buttons I do really like, they have kind of an iOS feel to them. And if you have an iPhone or iPad, you'll know exactly what I mean. Now the audio section allows you to choose where the demodulated audio should be sent to. And 99.9% .9 of the time, this will be to your computer's sound card and speakers. But for those of you that like to use SDR software to decode digital modes, then you have the option to route the audio to other applications or to other audio drivers like virtual audio cable. There is some limited audio filtering also available here with a slider control for AM and SSB low cuts. Now the next section down is band control. Each drop down has its own preset range for the given band. Now ham radio bands are all there, so just click on the band you want and the VFO will retune to that band for you. A new addition to Preview 2 is the keypad, but for some reason it just wasn't working for me on this version. Well, not how I expected it to work anyhow. The last section at the bottom titled Options allows you to change how the user interface looks. Also, you can change the waterfall palette here to suit your needs. 
There are some presets available, but I do hope in the future that these can be more customizable. Now the AUX SP on the top right is like a zoomed in section of where the current VFO is tuned to. Now it's this section where you can also assign notch filters simply by clicking within the VFO selection. And then if you want to remove them, just right mouse click on them. The bottom right section titled recording allows you to either record the audio output from the software to a WAV file, or you can change the output type to IQ, which means it will record the entire bandwidth. You can then play back this IQ file at a later stage and even tune around and change mode as if it was a live broadcast. Now just be careful with those IQ files as they're absolutely huge. So don't forget to stop recording when done. Now let's just flick through the bands and take a quick listen for a moment. And I'm located in Sutton Coalfield in the county of West Midlands. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to work at so many uh, Yota stations this year. And I, I hope you're having uh, great fun working the, uh, the bands there at uh, Harding. Um, Golf 7, Lima Hotel, Kilo from Golf Bravo 23, Yankee Austin Tango. Okay, that's that. No problem. Got that this time. Yeah, you're five and seven with me. Fifty-seven uh, into Doncaster. Thank you. Twenty Italy. Sugar zero Delta Charlie Romeo. Quarter twenty. As mentioned earlier, this software has multi-platform support. So just let me quickly show you how to install it on Linux or Ubuntu to be precise. So first, you just download the run file from the SDR website. Then you right mouse click on this file and make it executable. Simply double click on the file to run it and then just follow the on screen prompts. Once finished, SDR Connect will be installed and it will be available from the menu. Now, the screen may look a little glitchy in this particular recording, but this is most likely due to me running Ubuntu in a VMware instance and the graphics drivers are probably not loaded correctly. Now, if you're running this natively or a Linux machine, let me know down in the comments if you're experiencing any of these graphical glitches. Now, apart from this, everything works just as well as it did on Windows version, and it looks exactly the same in terms of features and functions. Australia, yeah, um, Lynn and I got married over in Hallett Cove, uh, just outside of Adelaide, and uh, we had um, uh, little penguins there. So I just want to say a massive thank you and well done to SDR Play and specifically the development team that have worked on SDR Connect, a nice multi-platform SDR software designed to work with the RSP SDR devices. I look forward to seeing where this software goes in the future, and hopefully we'll see the inclusion of plugin support like we did in SDR Uno. Anyway, guys, until the next video, stay safe, take care, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.